each year, HR.com provides over 220,000 members with more than 1,500 new webcasts and HRCIE learning credits. Tune in and get certified today. Earn recertification and certification credits towards your PHR, SPHR, GPHR, HRMP, HRBP, World at Work, and IHR. Here's a sample of what you can find on HR.com. Good morning and thanks everyone for joining us here um, today to talk about um, what I think is really the hot topic in uh, whether you call it employment relations, employment law, HR, whatever you want to call it, a, uh, social media really is the uh, the hot topic. It's been the hot topic for uh, you know uh, 12 to 18 months, and I think it's going to continue to be um, as we continue to live more and more of our lives online. And we're going to spend the next hour talking about what that means um, for your businesses um, and and your employees. But before we before we get into kind of what that means from a legal HR perspective, I want to start off with a little story. And the story is about a woman by the name of Heather Armstrong. And Heather Armstrong writes a blog called Deuce.com. And some of you may be familiar with Deuce.com, uh, the New York Times, and a story, uh, a feature piece in Sunday Magazine about a year ago referred to Heather as the queen of the mommy bloggers, which is what she is today. She uh, maintains Deuce.com to write about everything that's going on in her life um, as a divorcee, a mom, uh, uh, what have you. Um, but before she was the queen of the mommy bloggers, Heather Armstrong was just a plain old blogger when she started Deuce.com all the way back in 2001. So when you, we're going back now a dozen years into the past before uh, most people had ever heard of a blog and before Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Vine, pick your social network um, existed. Um, and back in 2001, Heather wasn't a mom. She was just, uh, she was just Heather Armstrong. And at the time, she was uh, a programmer for a uh, small Los Angeles um, internet uh, design company. And when she started Deuce.com back in 01, she used it like she did today to write about her life, but her life back then wasn't kids and ex-husbands. Um, her life back then was primarily her job. And that's what she wrote about a lot on Deuce.com, um, anonymously um, at the time. Um, and she wrote some posts like the following. Um, reasons, I wouldn't, uh, reasons I should not be allowed to work from home. Too many cushiony horizontal surfaces. Prime for nappage um, and porn. Um, she wrote on her blog one day, on my commute home from work yesterday evening, I found myself involved in a conversation about masturbation and sexual awareness with a male coworker. Um, and she also wrote a post in which she said, call me racist, dude, you've never met the Asian database administrator, referring to, um, referring to one of her coworkers. Well, one of her coworkers discovered Deuce.com and put two and two together and figured out not only that Deuce.com was about this person's particular workplace, but also that it was written by um, Heather Armstrong. And this is what Heather Armstrong wrote on her blog, February 26, 2002, um, the day after she was um, the day after she was fired. She wrote as follows. I lost my job today. My direct boss and the human resources representative pulled me into one of three relatively tiny conference rooms and informed me that the company no longer had any use for me. Essentially, they explained they didn't like what I had expressed on my website. I got fired because of Deuce.com. And then continuing down to the bottom of the page, two weeks ago, an anonymous person emailed every vice president of my company to inform them that I had written unsavory things on my personal website. She continued in this same post, uh, and I want to really key in on the date. This was 11 years ago, and, and she asked three questions that were extremely prescient in that they were really foreshadowed what the hot issues were in the synergy between social media and the workplace. And these are the three questions she asked, and I want you to keep these questions in the forefront of your mind because we're, we're going to come back at the end of the hour and try to give you, try to, to fill in some answers and give you some context. Number one, should I lose my job over what I have written on my personal website? Number two, at what point does my personal website, regardless of what I published on the site, affect my professional life? And number three, what recourse do I have? Um, she continues on Deuce.com 
to pose, uh, to make the following statement to everybody, and she has millions and millions and millions of readers and followers, but her advice is this. My advice to you, the employee, is be ye not so stupid. Never write about work on the internet unless your boss knows and sanctions the fact that you are writing about work on the internet. Let me suggest to you that if uh, employees around the country heeded Heather Armstrong's advice, um, we wouldn't be having this conversation today, and I likely would be practicing in a different area other than other than in employment law. Um, uh, and the reality is employees have not heeded this advice. These are a couple of recent examples. Um, this is uh, one person's blog, um, uh, uh, anonymous barista, who posted uh, uh, observations about what goes on at the coffee shop he works at. Um, this is just one ex exemplar post. Someone just said, I should be ashamed that my boss raised prices. If I had any shame, I wouldn't be working in this fucking job. And I uh, excuse the language. It's a quote. I sometimes get criticized because this presentation can be, uh, can be a little blue. But I can tell you that employment law and especially some of the things that people do on uh, websites and social networks um, can, uh, you know, aren't always aren't always the cleanest uh, aren't always the cleanest things in the world. Um, this is another example of a. Uh, this was um, someone uh, a server in an Applebee's restaurant who was fired after posting a picture of a receipt, uh, uh, credit card receipt that a customer left where they were. Uh, the customer was critical of the uh, automatic 18% tip that was added on, and this server posted this receipt on their. Um, uh, online and was and was fired as a result. So the reality is, look, people aren't heeding Heather's advice um, uh, and are not always careful as to what they're posting online, which is why we're having this conversation today. Um, just to close the loop on Heather Armstrong before we move on, recall her blog is called Deuce.com, um, and Deuce has entered the uh, the, the popular lexicon. Um, this is uh, uh, from the Urban Dictionary, but Deuce. Um, uh, now can mean to lose one's job because of one's website, as in, dude, I heard Jenny got deuced last week. Um, I can assure you, I'm 40, I don't talk like that, but I know a lot of people who are a decade or two younger than me who do, um, and, um, and deuced has now become uh, almost synonymous, at least online, with getting fired for what you say or do on, um, on, on websites. Um, and the reality is these issues, in terms of what employees are doing online, are getting um, are getting bigger. They're not getting smaller. This is um, just a, a, a quick uh, kind of visual snapshot to show you kind of what people are doing online. And as you can see, um, the red line is Facebook. So this is I don't know 13 percent of all time online is just spent on Facebook. You can see Google also has a little bit of an upward trend, although not quite as much. And then you can see the other Yahoo, Microsoft, AOL. Um, either flat or trending downward, but the clear um, winner here in terms of an increase from 2008 to 2012, which is the last time these statistics are available, is that the amount of time people are spending on Facebook is increasing at a much greater rate than the other um, than the other most popular sites online. And of course, we know that Facebook is just one piece. It's a big piece, but just one piece of, um, of what's referred to as the social media universe. Um, and new social networks pop up every day. Um, I mentioned earlier uh, a couple of them, Instagram, Vine. Um, you can, uh, what's scary to me from a, 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 an employment law perspective is you can go on uh, websites that call Vine videos. For those of you who aren't, aren't familiar, Vine allows you to record and post videos no longer than six seconds. Um, and you can uh, go online and do a search of Vine videos and find videos that people are posting about their workplaces. And I can guarantee you that they are not all flattering portrayals of what's going on in, uh, in people's workplace. So look, the social media universe is large. And any one of these networks uh, has the potential to implicate, um, to implicate what goes on in the workplace. Um, I, refer to the, I refer to the big three. Uh, or I call them the big three because they are. Right? Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn are really the three biggest social networks. And I don't really want to belabor the numbers um, uh, because we're all familiar with these, um, but the, the numbers are impressive. You know, Facebook, a billion users. Twitter, over a half billion. LinkedIn just crested 200 million. Um, and you know, the amount of data that passes through 
these, uh, you know, the, the the amount of information that passes through these um, uh, these sites on a daily basis um, is um, is really is really staggering. Which is all interesting from a, a kind of a user perspective. Like we know that people are on these websites a lot, and some people live on Facebook, some people live on Twitter. But from a workplace perspective, why should we care? Um, this is um, one uh, uh, one uh, question that was posed in a recent, uh, is in November of 2012, uh, poll or survey published by the law firm Proskauer Rose, um, which asked uh, thousands of their clients around the globe uh, many questions, including the following: Is misuse of social media an issue your business has ever had to deal with? Um, and uh, 40, almost 46 percent, or a little less than half, um, said the answer was yes. And so, you know, if if half of the companies are reporting that misuse of social media um, is an issue that they're dealing with, then this clearly is an issue. Um, it, it clearly is an issue that companies um, companies need to be paying attention to. And when we talk about misuse of social media, I really put it in two kind of big picture categories, and one we're going to briefly touch on, and then the other we're going to talk a lot about for the rest of the presentation uh, this afternoon. Uh, and it's, I talk about brand management versus, versus risk management as the two big areas that companies have to worry about. Um, what do I mean by brand management? That's what happens when an employee uh, or a customer or somebody kind of goes rogue online and says bad things about your business online. These are some uh, recent and maybe some not so recent examples from Twitter. Um, the most recent is the KitchenAid um, example, um, uh, uh, talking about uh, 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 making a derogatory comment about President Obama. There was the comment um, celeb boutique who apparently um, had some line of clothing named Aurora and didn't know that there was a the, the uh, movie theater shooting in Aurora, Colorado, decided to take advantage of Aurora trending on Twitter to pimp their latest Kim Kardashian-inspired clothing line. That didn't work out so well for them. Kenneth Cole had a similar faux pas, although I think them, uh, that company a little more uh, cognizant of what was going on with the uprisings in Egypt a couple years ago and some other examples. So this is kind of what could go wrong when you're um, online when a company's online persona is hijacked either by, by a rogue employee or a rogue customer, um, but that's not really what I want to talk about today. That's that's an issue and is definitely out there. But the issues I want to talk about are more internal to the company, um, and those are um, what I think of as the three big legal risks that come from employees being online. Um, those risks being discrimination risks, risks from breaches of confidentiality and then risks dealing with protected concerted activity um, under the uh, U.S. National Labor Relations Act and, and the National Labor Relations Board. Um, and we're going to talk about all three of these in, um, in, some, in some detail. To watch the rest of this webcast, earn recertification credits, and learn more about certification programs, click the link in our description or join HR.com and subscribe to our channel.